August 2024, we are now in this new paradigm of energy, and it's going to be getting exciting. There's going to be a lot of changes. There's going to be a lot of fire being lit under your ass. So we're going to get into it. Let's go check it out. <clears throat> All right, everybody, what's going on? My name is Nan Vazakis, and we're here to talk about the August energies Hope you all are doing well. Before I get into it, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like a private reading with me, uh, please go to optimizinghuman.com. So <clears throat> this month, the big energy that we have going on, of course, is the Mars-Jupiter conjunction. Now, last month in July, we had the Mars-Uranus conjunction. And we saw what happened with that energy, right? The whole assassination attempt with uh, former President Trump. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I felt that energy like crazy. And when I watched that, I felt a deeply emotional response, very similar to if you're, you know, if you remember this back when 9-11 happened. When I watched that on TV. I had a very emotional response to it. But um, this, this, of course, uh, I feel was a, a faded event. And uh, it was meant to happen this way because uh, this is, again, more awakening energy. Now, Uranus and Mars, uh, of course, is not as nice, I guess you could say, of an energy as Mars and Jupiter. Now, with that being said, Mars and Jupiter is going to be happening in a different sign, the sign of Gemini. And with that, it's going to be much more cerebral. But also, Jupiter is the, is, is the great benefic, right? Now, Mars is also the god of war so would that be now war doesn't necessarily have to mean fighting it can also mean passion right it's the deep ingrained desire to succeed to make things happen to pursue uh your purpose or what you want now what i see this happening is because jupiter uh it just expands and it'll so it's ultimately beneficial but during the process of of, of really moving through this energy it can really bring out uh, a lot of toxic traits in order to be cleared out and moved through. So that could be the negative manifestation of this, uh, if you will, going through this month. And we also have Mercury going retrograde in Virgo. And so Mercury rules Virgo, or at least it's the um, it's the ancient ruler. I kind of feel like Chiron is the modern ruler, but I'll get into that in another video. So Mercury being an assignment it likes means that we're really going to be connected to understanding how our thought processes are, are processing information and, and really being aware of our thoughts. Now, if you go on retrograde, basically almost exactly um, down to the minute to the time of the new moon in Leo. So with this, Mercury is going to be retrograde while Jupiter and Mars conjunct because Mars doesn't conjunct to the middle of the month. <clears throat> so with all this being said, there's some major shift or development that's going to happen that is going to require a pivot okay we're being asked by the universe to step up to grow to clear to evolve basically the the basement or the floor the lowest part of the vibration of the collective energy of humanity is steadily and slowly moving up and these aspects are bumping it up little by little so this is why there's a lot of triggering going on there's a massive amount of triggering. And as we can see out in the world, there's a massive amount of what appears to be division. Okay, but the division's always been there. It's just being called out. The truth is being illuminated so that we can make a choice for what we want to create or what we want to do. Now, the important thing is, is to identify and understand why the competitive divisive nature is going on, but not to feed it. Okay, we are moving into a place of creative expression. And when we stay focused on our own heart's desire and our own creative expression, that is when we do something good in the world. That's what that's when we create what we want, and we manifest our desires. Uh, or we manifest our heart's desires to be more specific. All right. We don't, if we're manifesting egoic desires, that's all the darkness that's coming out because that's service to self. And that service to self stuff is uh, being illuminated to be dissolved and cleared and processed and alchemized. All right. 
Now, also, too, we have Pluto all month at zero degrees uh, of Aquarius, which is where we had the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction. We also had, early this year, we had Mars-Pluto, we had Venus-Pluto. Uh, and that's all I can remember at the top of my head. Um, in the last few years, there's been a lot of activity, activity at zero degrees uh, of Aquarius. So... Pluto will, of course, move over this one more time because it's going to go back to 29 degrees of Capricorn on the cusp of September 1st to sep September 2nd. And it's going to stay there till uh, November 16th, I believe is the date. So this is, you know, those two full, the, the, those two full moons that we had in Capricorn were sort of like a pre-cleanse, if you will. Now, August is like the preparation. Now we're setting things up. Now we're getting things ready for the last ingress of Pluto uh, into Capricorn to cleanse out the last itty bitty stuff. So you could probably feel like, you know, the deep inner work right now is real. It's deep. It's intense. Like everybody can feel it. I will also say that because we have Neptune here at 29 degrees, just about all month, and we just had Chiron go retrograde too. The delusions can be our next level, okay? And uh, Pluto and Neptune are both going to be at 29 degrees here for a short period of time together, but that's not going to be for until like the first few days uh, of, uh, well, the, the last few days of August, first few days uh, of September. <clears throat> and with these energies sitting at these anorectic, very powerful degrees, if you still have, there, there's, there's an impulsive nature um, with this energy that if you go, it, it, whatever remaining trauma in this particular archetypal energy is going on, look where Pluto uh, is, is transiting in your chart, and you'll see the focus of that energy. But wherever this is happening, there could be a very deep delusion in your life that you are stepping into that is going to hit you like a ton of bricks at the end of this year. So you have to be very deliberate and very careful. You need to slow your energy down. If you're feeling carried away by an impulsive feeling, um, like say, <clears throat> say you have a new job opportunity or you have a new relationship opportunity, right? Both those things are very common to come in. <clears throat> it seems too good to be true. Or, uh, you know, either way, like if the job opportunity, wow, this, you know, the, this could manifest all my dreams, all my wishes. It's possible. However, this is also going to challenge the, the, the very depths of your soul to see where you get in your own way. Any kind of still lingering self-sabotaging energy or uh, where you lie to yourself or egoic uh, service to self energy is going on. If it's not based on making the world a better place, there's going to be a lesson in it. Okay? Uh, relationship. Right. If it's if it's fast, if it's intense, if you guys are just like, you know, falling in love in like a week. <laughs> right. Or if it's it's surrounded or based around being in an alternative consciousness, meaning that if you're drinking together, if you're doing cocaine together, if you're doing some kind of drugs together, even if you're doing ceremony together, you got to be really careful. Because right now requires a very sober mind. Because these entities, these these dark spirits, Pluto is the underworld, and Pluto is running the show right now, along with Neptune, which is delusion. All right, so Neptune is going to retrograde back and then have to go over this place again to come into the new sign. So there is a simmering, a deep, deep cleansing of the soul. And uh, it's almost like we're kind of in this place where, like, I just, I can't handle any more shenanigans any more drama any more any more bullshit however um you may be stepping right into it if you're not very careful so especially with this mercury retrograde the key is to slow down slow is smooth smooth is fast okay and step into that heart spaced uh leadership role where you're taking massive action through responsibility with every step that you take so you got to cross all the T's, you got to dot all the I's. If you're frivolous with 
uh, you know, um, with, with your planning, especially with this Mercury retrograde in Virgo. And this new moon is happening at 12 degrees of Leo on uh, August August 4th. Okay, the, the new moon is about give, being given a new opportunity to step into your heart and heart-based leadership. Okay, now with this heart-based leadership, Mercury is going through a fine-tooth comb. Okay, if you want to truly be a leader, you know, you're going to have to, uh, you're not going to be able to be lazy. You got to wake up early. You got to have like your day-to-day -day function, um, you know, uh, in a good flow because every minute of your day is going to be required for you to um, stay organized and structured or else you're going to get lost in the sauce. And if you're lost in the sauce, you know, you're going to be like, ah, eh, well, I don't really feel like doing this. I'm just going to go chill or, you know, go out drinking. If you're, if you're just deciding to like, eh, that can wait till later and you want to go out drinking with your friends, party and have fun. That is where you're going to have a really, really bad time because there's the universe, God, source energy, whatever you want to call it is, is, is opening up massive portals and of, of opportunity, but the opportunity comes with a massive amount of heart based responsibility. Okay, and that heart base is giving back to the world, right? So if you're still like me, 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 I want, I want, I want, like you can have like, you know, want a better foundation, a better life, but you want a better life to take care of your kids. You want a better life to help the homeless. You want a better life to be able to support more animals in need, right? <clears throat> this is where the energy is going to be most efficiently uh, supported. And if that energy is not being entertained, Pluto is going to whip your butt and just, I'm, I'm just letting you know. Okay. So this month, you know, I made, I made the cover, uh, follow the yellow brick road <clears throat> because this is really where we're trying to find that place like home. But in the movie, the wizard of Oz, right. They had to get to the wizard of Oz to discover the wizard of Oz was bullshit. And that it was at the different people and there were different archetypes feeling like they didn't have like, you know, the Tin Man um, or the, uh, didn't have a soul. The, the Scarecrow didn't have a heart. Um, I don't remember the movie. It's been a while, but you get what I'm saying, right? Uh, and all she had to do is click her heels three times and set the intention to go home. So metaphorically and energetically, we're doing the same thing this month. We're stepping into our heart and where <clears throat> there's the yellow brick road, which we can go down that way. All right. And, it, and, and if we do, we're going to end up coming around to the same conclusion that we could come to now if we slow down and not try to race towards the finish line, so to speak, because we just don't want to deal with the end of it. This is like at, in, uh, in military terms, right? This would be the end of a 25 mile ruck march. You're at the last quarter mile and you're you're dehydrated, you're tired, uh, you're cramping, and you're so exhausted that you're hallucinating and you think you see the line right here, but it's actually another hundred yards up. Well, once you see the line, you're not going to stop. Then you hear this voice in the distance, but you're also hearing other voices because you're hallucinating because you're so tired. And you got to open your eyes like you've been running with your eyes closed, just trying to push and make it. But you got to breathe. You got to reconnect to your breath when you're in that last place of exhaustion. Now, this exhaustion could be emotional exhaustion. It could be being tired of feeling lonely. It could be being tired of not having what you want, being tired of, you know, uh, being broke, being tired of a situation that you're living in your life and you want to change, but you don't know how to. You do know how to. It's just there's an action that you need to take that that you're afraid to take. And it's about face. If Pluto is about facing that deep, deep fear. And whatever action that is required to take, that's Mars, right? Mars being in Gemini is, you know, kind of being in your head, but also connecting to other people. This is where we need to build community um, or connect to new people, new situations, new things. And there's a lot of opportunity to do that. But that's also going to test your boundaries in the deepest way possible. Now, don't forget, too, we're also in the last deacon of where the nodes are in Aries and Libra. So, um, they're at seven degrees here during the new moon uh, on August 4th. And they're going to be going forward here. Of course, we have uh, we have the Venus-Mercury conjunction here as well in Virgo uh, on August 7th. Now, 
Venus is in detriment in Virgo. This is like where we don't know how to receive. Now, Mercury going retrograde, of course, is gonna is gonna go back over Venus. This is a this is a, a three time transit, so it's gonna go back into Leo. But Mercury conjunct Mercury retrograde conjunct uh, Venus here is like, look, open yourself up to receive what you want, but you got to do it in a certain way, and it's probably the way that that either you're not thinking about or you don't want to now. If you're not thinking about it, this is where you get advice from outside sources or you pray and the prayer will come to you, you know, if you're if you're connected to yourself like that and you will hear the answer. All right. Maybe not exactly right then, but at the right time. And this is where trust comes in as well. So whatever process, like how do I manifest more money? How do I really manifest, you know, this love? Well, when the circumstances come up, are you avoiding or ignoring red flags? You know, the the warning signs are going to be there. But if you're distracted through uh, if you're distracted through uh, any means, uh, through delusion, through illusion, through substance use and or abuse, through any kind of addictive nature, sex addiction, uh, you know, alcohol, especially right now, you should not be drinking any alcohol at all with Uranus sitting on top of alcohol that is going to literally like alcohol represents it represents alcohol right and with uranus there the intuitive voice of alcohol like is is going to take over um your own intuitive voice so it's like alcohol is going to replace your heart voice in your mind and that's going to lead you down all kinds of bad roads so stay away from alcohol and really any any illicit drugs as well and and this is why even i say with uh, plant medicine use right cuz they those are spirits and they give you information. They give you signs. So with Uranus conjunct Al uh, Algol, it could manipulate or modify the voice or the information. Um, and there's a lot of trickster energy out there right now. Okay. So a sober mind right now is so important. And, and, and mind you too, Uranus will go retrograde at 27 degrees, which is um, it's within a degree away from Algol. So it's going to retrograde back over Algol and Uranus moves very slowly. Right. <clears throat> so it, this is going to last about a year long with Uranus sitting there. So Mars Uranus opened up the portal for this energy. So really, I would say it's probably a good idea to be sober just period for a while. All right. But the good part about this is that um, Uranus and Pluto are starting to come into their trine. This is not going to fully take effect uh, until mid next year. Okay, because Uranus will retrograde, then it'll go forward. Once it really gets into Gemini, that's when we're really going to start to see uh, the trine coming into place. And that's going to last a long time. So when we have two outer planets like that coming into a trine, that's when a lot of growth in, in the world is going to happen. And that's where we, we really have a chance to step into a leadership powerful position um, to transform the world, to be a part of that transformation and positive change. Okay, but while Neptune here is, is here at 29 degrees, be very, very careful. Be very careful uh, about what you're choosing to uh, pay your attention to because it's very easy to get, to get caught up in things that are not right for your heart. And right now, your heart is your best, really the only guidance of going forward. And of course, your heart is connected to Christ consciousness, right? Um and that's and and that's precisely where we're going. And there's going to be a lot like the distractions and the things that are going to, going to be coming up while Pluto comes into its last ingress into into Capricorn is going to be gnarly. It's going to be unexpected. It's going to be shocking. Uh, it's going to affect us all in some way, shape, or form. All right. So, um, but back to uh, Mercury. Uh, we're going to be having Mercury come back into Leo. So, of course, with the new Moon in Leo. Um, at 12 degrees, we're having a lot of, you know, this is a lot of creative energy is a lot of getting out there meeting people. This is a lot of standing in your heart or checking yourself or being put in check in relationship to your ego uh, based desires. Okay, on the 14th, we have Mars exactly conjunct Jupiter, we're going to be feeling this for sure coming up into this conjunction. And this is going to be really great if you want to get out there. Like I know I'm doing a lot of pitching um, to open up a healing center. And, you know, this is going to be a great time for me to uh, speak to investors because uh, and this is in my second house. Right. So 
um, turning on my charisma and, you know, re- but I'm, I'm studying my ass off. I'm working every day uh, to be productive, but also making sure that I'm not overdoing it because I don't want to get sick. I, I, I found that if I try, I, I used to just push through it, right? But for me, pushing through it doesn't work anymore. So I have to find that balance of being proactive in my healing process or being proactive in keeping my central nervous system balanced because Uranus also represents the central nervous system. All right. If we try to push too hard um, and and just ignore, like ignore an override, then we're gonna we're gonna get sick or we're gonna get burnt out. And so we're kind of teetering on that threshold. So finding that flow. And this is at least true for me. Please let me know in the comment section below if this is true for you. All right. But with Mars conjunct Jupiter, this is checking uh, the work that we've done internally on our divine masculine. Right. So how we go out into the world, are we doing it in a healthy way or are we still being self-sabotaging or, or whatever it is that you struggle with? Uh, you know, is that still dominating your energy? This is going to be a good check and balance spot. It just so happens that Mercury is going to be at zero degrees. Pluto is also going to be at zero degrees. Um, and, you know, with those two energies, again, this is a void space. So this is giving us opportunity to really, really uh, see where we need to go from here. This is like we've climbed up to a peak. Now we get the binoculars and we're looking around. All right. Um, you know, let's let's congregate and see where we're at, see where we need to go from here to get to this next place. And this is where... We need to be all in on what our heart is telling us what to do. And when we do that, we can be successful in whatever measure that you, success means to you. This success could bring you to really exactly where you want to go um, or even more so. Right. Uh, but you got to make sure that you're doing all this internal work or it's all the internal work now is going to start to become automatic. And as it becomes automatic, you're going to find that flow that that flow is going to become more effortless and that's when finally the good things are going to start coming in at a whole new level okay and you're going to start thinking more creatively and clear as well so it's very very exciting now you're at 27 degrees so it's past alcohol yes but it's going to retrograde all right um and then now we're going to be coming up into uh the full moon which is going to be at 27 degrees of Aquarius. So um, let's, let me get this exact here. 27 degrees, 27 degrees. All right. Minutes are a little off, but that's okay. All right. So during this full moon, and I'm going to make another video about this as well, but Mercury is retrograde at 26 degrees where the sun is at 27 degrees. So we have essentially, a, you know, a Mercury Kazemi. Uh, during this full moon, uh, which is a really good checking in point with the Aquarian energy of our lives. So, of course, we've been dabbling into this Aquarian energy, and these are like checkpoints for it's almost like each time we have a significant aspect in Aquarius, we're dumping another puzzle piece into putting it together. But this part of us, this ego part of us wants to know, it wants to control, it wants it to be here already. Right, but the universe is like ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. You 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 cannot bring that lower vibrational energy into this higher vibrational space that you're moving into. So that's the purpose and point of all this. All right, and when you understand that, it makes it that much more like doable, if you will. Okay, I get it. I cannot. I'm still moving through jealousy, or I'm still moving through like whatever, like self sabotage. I'm still moving through this negative self talk, and I got to get rid of it because the higher vibration. It doesn't allow those lower vibrations in there. And look, every single person here has an opportunity to be able to elevate and move through into this next chapter. We all have something. We're all in this new place, right? Whatever it is that you're going through right now, it's really important to accept where you're at because it, uh, there's a part of it that feels very uncomfortable. We're all infants in this new energy. And allow us to learn how to crawl first then walk then run but we're so used to running in a different way in a different energy that we have to unlearn or let go of that way that we were doing things before and that really really represents us trusting our heart trusting our intuition and taking care of our physical vessel right 
Taurus is our physical vessel. Uranus in Taurus, it's calling out all the parts that, um, that are out of balance. So if you're experiencing physical symptoms or physical issues, addressing those is going to help the clarity of the emotional stuff coming through. Of course, we also have Chiron sitting here at 23 degrees, which is right at the procession of the equinox. Um, and, uh, you know, Mercury is loosely trying uh, over over there, more so to uh, to Eris. And Eris is sitting there retrograde at 25 degrees. So Chiron and Eris together, this is our identity. This is just like, oh, we're wounded, we're tired, we've been sh we shot in the back with, you know, metaphorical arrows and and we want to rebel and the system has to die. And look, it is dying, right? But it's gonna it's gonna die in a certain way at a certain pace. It's not gonna happen at the time that your ego wants it to die. So don't go out and rebel. Like don't go feeding the 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 uh, the dysfunctional rebellious attitude that they're trying to get you to feed into because that's gonna self sabotage as well. All right. So the nineteenth we have this full moon, um, and you know there are some there are some good aspects here. Uh, there are some difficult ones as well, but nothing too significant that I'm seeing. This this Neptune quincunx uh, to the sun it, and, and Vesta, which is also right there at 27 degrees as well. This is where the delusion can really um, knock you off balance. All right. So make sure like you're you're being very cautious of what you're paying your attention to. Like um, I I. I wouldn't pay too much attention to the news. That could be very detrimental. All right. Uh, Jupiter here is also square to Venus. Mars is square to Black and Lilith. And is also Jupiter is square Saturn. So this, this Jupiter square Saturn is exact right here with Mars there too. This is, again, so this energy is is, is intense and, and, and a little difficult. But the good thing is it's lighting a fire under your ass to get going, to get moving to correct the karmic imbalances that are happening in your life, okay? Um, and this is going to be mostly internal, or at least the the feelings of it are going to be internal, but the but it's going to be coming from an, from the environment, from the outward expression, which is which is Jupiter, okay? And, and now that Mars is conjunct Jupiter, this is right. There is no denying it's right in your face, but you have to do the internal correction, which is Saturn, in order to be able to course correct. So. The red flags are going to be like a neon sign glowing in your face right here. And it's like the universe is making these signs bigger and bigger and more, more obvious so that you can see them. And if you decide to just go into this dysfunctional Neptunian energy with Uranus on Algol, drinking your life away or going out and doing drugs and just, and, and, and just, and just not being present and just avoiding the inner work that that is uh avoiding the inner work by the way okay um doing anything that's altering your state of consciousness uh really at all right now so be very 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 careful all right this is a this is a warning because i want to see y'all everybody that's watching this video i want to see y'all grow and step into your divine power that you your soul decided to go into in this lifetime, but we have free will, right? And look, everybody's exhausted in one way, shape, or form. All right? Like our minds are exhausted. Our bodies are exhausted. Like there's so much, we're getting hit from so many angles, but it's that pressurization of the exhaustion that is molding us into who we're meant to be. So this month is really molding us like Plato. We're like Gumby right now, energetically speaking. And that's going to lay out the next, we're really setting the foundation for the next 20 year cycle. Okay. I cannot stress how important this is. This is for the next 20 years of our life. Cause at, at the very core cycle is Pluto going into Aquarius. So if you're still fucking off now, it's, you're going to, you're going to, you're, you're solidifying these vibrations and you're going to be solidifying these behavior patterns for the next two decades to come. All right. So have the courage, step in your fear and grow and look at the bigger picture. There's a much bigger picture here going on. Okay. I'm saying all this out of love because I want everybody to be, you know, making the world a better place and doing the good stuff that, you know, your, you know, your soul, you know, came here to do to make it happen. All right. So uh, let's see on August 22nd, we come into Virgo season. So 
Happy birthday to all you Virgos out there. Um, and let's see here. What else significant we have going on? Um, Mars is still hanging out. So we have a lot of energy here. Um, the last week of August, the moon's going to be transiting through Gemini. We got Jupiter at 18 degrees. Uh, Jupiter's going to go to 21 degrees. Uh, and then re retrograde back. So it's getting close to its so its retrograde point, but not quite there yet. Um, Mars is still there. Uh, Mercury goes direct on August 29th. Okay, so pretty much the whole month of August, you know, uh, we're, we're coming around and learning these lessons of stepping more into our heart and recalibrating um, any kind of potential delusion that we might have. Uh, and on the same day that Mercury goes direct, uh, Venus goes into Libra, which is his home sign. So Venus is getting close to conjuncting the south node, but that's not going to happen until next month. So we'll talk about that then. And we have, at the end of the month, we finally have, uh, I know Uranus goes retrograde late on uh, August 31st. Okay, so with Uranus getting ready to go retrograde too, that energy is very, very potent. And late July, we had Chiron, go retrograde so that energy here in august is still pretty potent and fresh as well so these wounds are just the inner work's not done i mean the, the inner work's never done right but it's more of like a, a a deeper form of acceptance of the circumstances that you're in the more that you can accept and the more that you can work with the acceptance in your circumstances the more that you're going to be able to make it pliable and work for you it's the non-acceptance of your circumstances. Ah, I'm here, but I can't be here. Or, like this is just not work. I got to change it, right? But it's it's you can only you can change your perception. You, you have control over what you eat, right? What you think, how you feel. You cannot change the external environment, but through working with the internal environment, you will alter the external environment. But but it comes after. So you have to have the faith and the trust that the inner work that you're doing is going to actually have an outcome, a positive outcome. All right, so. As Uranus is getting ready to go retrograde, then it's going to go back over Algol and keep teaching up the uh, teaching us these lessons. But for this month in and of itself, um, you know, new moon Leo, full moon in uh, Aquarius. But the real, the real kicker, the real, uh, the real underlying transformative energy is Jupiter or Mars conjuncting Jupiter, which can which can really activate a lot of massive, beautiful changes for stepping into a new chapter or a new foundation, right? Or it can activate major lessons, which is going to illuminate the toxic aspects of our masculinity. And everyone, man, woman, has masculine energy. It's how we go out into the world. And it's also how we connect to people too. All right. So I hope this helps. If you resonate with this, please like subscribe to my channel that would help a lot you know get this message out there to more people and if you would like a reading from me or see all the other services that i provide please go to optimizinghuman.com i hope you all have a wonderful and amazing month of august i hope i'll see you on the next video